I think it was about two years ago when Barry and I first got serious about paddling the surf ski and really kind of learning the surf ski. And it, it became our primary paddle craft uh, as we kind of transitioned from stand up to outrigger canoe to surf ski. And we posted a video about using the wing paddle, kind of the lengths and uh, the details of what we were doing with the wing paddle. Because let's face it, the wing paddle, it's really different from any other paddle that we were accustomed to, say the canoe paddle or the stand up paddle. Since then we've paddled, uh, I think we've put in over a little over 6,000 miles collectively between the two of us in the surf ski. We've learned a little bit more, we're comfortable in uh, just about any conditions that we've run across so far. We thought it was time to do another video about what we've learned about the wing paddle since then. So hang on, stay tuned. We're going to talk about some tips that we've learned and kind of where we've landed in some areas of using the wing paddle when paddling your surf ski. Okay, number one, we have both shortened our paddles quite a bit. So I think when we posted that video, I was paddling around 213, 214. Uh, I think Barry was paddling maybe 212, 213. Since then, we have both shortened our paddles. He's paddling at 210 now. I paddle around 209 to 209 and a half. Um, we found that works better. It lets us get our rate up better and it gives us better balance in the ski so we're not overreaching quite as much and pulling ourselves out of the ski uh, like everybody does when they first start. If you haven't found it yet, Epic Kayaks has a paddle wizard on their website and we both used that and we found it was very, very helpful in helping us determine the paddle length. So go try that paddle wizard. Uh, you'll put in different details. It'll take you through different details about your style, the type of paddling that you're doing. And you will find, we both found that it, it put us within a centimeter of the length that we've landed on that we found works best for us. So we definitely recommend that you go use the paddle wizard at the Epic Kayaks website. Number two, speaking of the paddle wizard, we have both downsized our paddle. So we've gone from the mid wing, the Epic mid wing paddle. We're both now using small mid wings and we found that that's given us uh, a better rating, better cadence, given us um, uh, better endurance that helps when we're going out and doing these longer paddles and getting more miles in the surf ski and I have found particularly I think both of us have found this but particularly me because I'm a little more let's say mature than Barry um, that it's much easier on my shoulders I'm having less shoulder issues and some of that's probably technique but a lot of it I think is probably going to the smaller paddle the small mid wing paddle so that's the second area that we've changed since that last video number three we both landed on the zero degree feather. And I know this is sort of like asking, uh, going into the bike shop and asking a bunch of cyclists what the best bicycle chain oil is or chain lube. Uh, it's a little different for everybody. Everybody's gonna have an opinion, but for us going to a zero degree feather has worked really well. It uh, makes bracing on the ocean and that's really what we're all about is, is ocean paddling. Makes uh, bracing much more easy and intuitive uh, we also saw the Mocker Brothers in their online course, I believe they recommended a zero degree feather. I think Oscar recommends a zero degree feather. Um, and for me, I, I actually worked up to a 60 degree feather because I thought, well, that's what you're supposed to do because that's what the really good guys do and the, the more experienced paddlers. And I started developing some wrist issues. When I went back to the zero degree feather, the wrist issues went away. Uh, immediately. And I recognize that's probably a technique issue. And if I had a coach, they could probably coach me through that and I wouldn't have the wrist issues. But we don't have a coach here. We're kind of learning on our own. We're a little bit isolated like I know a lot of you guys are. So for both of us, the zero degree feather is working well biomechanically and it seems to work well from a speed uh, perspective too. We've both done a few races since then, since our last video and we've done pretty well. Um, Barry has, uh, I think he's raced three races. He's won overall. Uh, in two of those and, and got second in another and I've roasted a couple and finished behind Barry in one and, and one overall in another. So, you know, again, they're small races um, and they're small local races, but still the point is that being fairly new to this sport, we're not finding that the zero degree feather is really inhibiting our performance very much at all, but that's, that's an area for you guys to weigh in. Okay, the fourth thing that we realized in paddling this wing paddle it like a wing. It's, this paddle is not at all like what we were used to coming from 
outrigger canoe or, or stand up, you know, where you, you actually plant and pull back. If you do the, if you plant and pull back with this paddle, you're going to pull yourself out of the surf ski. And we did that a lot when we were first learning. But for me, one of the kind of learning tips that really helped me a lot was to actually treat this thing like a wing. And if you think about like a, an airplane, when it's flying towards you, let me get this turned around here. When the airplane's flying towards you, it's not paddling up and down, which is what would happen if you were to plant this paddle and pull straight back towards you like you will with a stand up or a um, um, canoe paddle. But you're actually like an airplane, it's always moving toward that leading edge. And that's what you want to do with the paddle. When you plant this wing paddle, you plant it and then the movement goes toward that edge, not toward that face. And so I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. So when you're, when you plant with that wing paddle, think about plant and then move toward that leading edge. Let the paddle follow that leading edge as you paddle. So that's really going to help your rotation. It's going to get the paddle out of the water before you go too far back, which was another mistake that we were making early on. We, we paddled too far back, pull ourselves over out of the ski. So our stability and our ability to paddle in rough water in the ocean really went up when we started figuring out you follow that leading edge of the wing. You know, and with regards to that tip, that teaching tip or that teaching cue, you know, this didn't really resonate with Barry. I, I told him this one day, I was like, oh, you know what I think? You really need to follow the leading edge of the wing. And he's like, I don't get it. And sometimes these teaching cues don't really work for you. And that's one of the reasons that we ask for you guys to provide your input and your comments down below because there are different tips at different times that we're ready to hear. And, uh, you know, Barry and I were talking about this a couple weeks ago and he said, oh, no, that makes sense to me now. That makes sense. That's a good, that's a good teaching cue. So share your tips below with us. Really curious on like, what are your tips for really learning the rotation of the wing paddle or how to use the wing paddle? Anyways, those are four areas that we've kind of landed on uh, since posting that video a couple of years ago. If you have comments and tips and suggestions and feedback, we'd love to hear your comments below. We always appreciate hearing from you guys. We're looking forward to meeting uh, more of you and, um, and paddling with you in the future. So you guys take care. We'll talk to you later.